has its ups and downs. Turn your oh, no. oh, 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 to an ugly frown. Seems that when I fix one thing, another one comes, clouding up my vision. But I can feel the sun. I believe that I can do this. I know that I can win just as long as I have his love within. I believe that I can make it. I can make it through the night. I believe that I can walk on with my head held high. I believe that I am special in every way. But in order to have my victory, I gotta believe.
whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have the everlasting life. We welcome you once again the first morning star missionary Baptist Church here in the city of Gainesville, Florida. Always thanking God for you being tuned in and being a part of this broadcast. Thanking him for you and thanking him for the many, many ones who have tuned in in the past to be a part of this broadcast and allowed us to be able to come into your home to present the good word and the good news of God, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. We welcome you here. We thank God that we've been able to be in the sanctuary. We've designated this time to be able just to glorify him, not just in this time, but all through our walk, we should bring glory to his name because he is so worthy of our praise, our honor, and our glory. We thank you once again, and we just pray, God, that you're doing well and staying safe. We know that we still continue to live in this time where the pandemic seems to constantly just want to be in battle with us, not allowing us to be able to get to the place that we desire to be so we can be able to fellowship with one another the way we so desire. But we thank God for what he's doing. He's opening up the doors and allowing us to be able to come in and take precaution as we come in and be able to still give him the glory and be able to exalt him because he's so worthy of our exaltation. And we just thank God that you have blessed us. Our Father has blessed us and you have been a blessing to this church. We ask that you continue to contribute to the, the financial needs of the church. We just thank God for you, Morning Star member blessing us with your tithes and your offering. We just ask that you continue to do it. We look forward to this next third Sunday, third and fourth Sunday, when we'll be back in the sanctuary to give God praise. First Sunday and second Sunday, we videotape. We make it, we videotape our past services, and then we go third and fourth Sunday, we hear being able to be, being able to be a part of the fellowship with one another. We're not gonna hold you very long. We just ask you to be able to get your Bibles, if you don't mind, we have a passage of scripture that we want to be able to share with you this morning. Amen. We be know God to ask God to be able to bless it. Amen. And be able to allow it to be able to do what he's about to send it out to do. But before we do that, let us have a word of prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We glorify you because you're so worthy of praise, honor, and glory. Thank you for this blessed opportunity to be able to be in our house of God once again and have our feet on holy ground. Thank you for how you're constantly taking care of us, Lord, in this season in which we find ourselves in. Lord, we ask that you continue, Lord, to blanket us with your blanket us with your love and your protection, dear God. Help us, Lord, to be mindful of the things that we should do, dear God, and give us the strength, the ability, the wisdom, and the knowledge to do those things. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you just continue, Lord, to let your will be known in our life. Give us, Heavenly Father, Lord, sound. Amen. Sound guidance and direction, God, and the way in which you want us to go, dear Father. Help us to always have the Father, Lord, so a spirit of kindness to one another, Lord. Always remember forgetting, Lord, that we might be entertaining angels, Lord, as we go about our day. I pray now, dear Father, Lord, for this day, dear Father, your body of believers here in the morning. So I pray, God, for those who are sick and afflicted, those who are in the hospital, those who are suffering with sickness, dear God. I pray, God, that your healing hands touch their body, Lord, and bring them back to full strength. I pray for those, Heavenly Father, who may be going through financial difficulties, Lord. Pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you allow them, Heavenly Father, Lord, to, to, to tap into your goodness, Lord, and knowing that you, Heavenly Father, Lord, have anything that they need. And all they do is have you to do is to have the faith that you to be able, Lord, to know that you will take care of them because you are God that can take care of every need in every situation that shows up in our life. I pray, God, that they walk by faith and not by sight, dear God, knowing, Heavenly Father, that you promise, Lord, that you will never need them and also never forsake them. Now, I pray, dear God, we should look upon this country as a whole, Lord, as we go through these, these times in which we're facing not only this country, but this entire world. Lord, whatever the messages you bring to us, that we get our attention to, Heavenly Father, as we go through this season, let us, Heavenly Father, be having a mind for ear to hear and a heart to obey. Whatever it is, God, that you want us to be able to do, Lord, because, God, we want to do your will, for your will is perfect in our life. Now, I pray, dear God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in my sight. Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. This I pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. As you get your Bibles, if you don't mind, look at the book of Luke, New Testament, New Testament, the book of Luke. That's where we'll be going at this morning. Praise the Lord. And we'll be looking there in the 16th chapter of Luke, starting right there at verse number 19. Luke 16, chapter verse number 19, 
Amen. Amen. And then it reads thusly. There was a certain rich man who was clothed with purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Rag of Lazarus, which was laid at the gate full of sores, and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in, he, and in hell he lifted his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip, that he may dip the, fang, the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, Remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good thing, and likewise Lazarus' evil thing. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would come from hence, and you, for they which pass from thence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Verse 27 said, Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, let thou would have sent him to my father's house. For I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophet. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father, Abraham, but if one went for them from the dead, they will repent. Last verse, verse number 31 said, And he said to him, That if they hear not Moses and the prophet, neither will they be persuaded the one that rose from the dead. Amen. The one who rose from the dead. I would like to use for a topic this morning, amen, from this our reading, I've got a seat. I've got a seat. Praise his holy name. Mahalia Jackson Church, the queen of gospel, made famous the song, the song that the title was, that all, that's all right. That's all right. The gospel song reminds us that regardless of what we have to go through or put up with, that's all right. As long as we got a seat in the kingdom, that's all right. With so much fear of death around us, it's good to know that we have a home prepared for us in heaven. We try so hard not to speak or talk about death, but death cannot be ignored, church, especially in the midst of a pandemic. With death, with the pain of death all around us. We need the assurance that comes from Christ himself. As Mahalia Jackson said, we need that assurance that that's all right. This is the reason we've been led to this parable of the beggar and the rich man shared with us by Jesus. But to understand the message, we need to look at the setting, what was actually going on when Jesus made of Jesus spoke on this parable. Understand Jesus was in the home of a Pharisee. And through the and though the message was meant for Jesus' disciples, though the message was meant for his disciples, it was also meant for the rich, the scribes, the Pharisees, the publicans, and sinners who was present at that particular time. Jesus was teaching a very hard lesson about greed. Yes, he was. It's the one about the unrighteous steward, a covenant man, a lover of money. The parable of the unrighteous steward pricks the conscience of the money-loving Pharisees who reacted with contempt. 
They was upset with Jesus because he pricked their heart uh, and they came angry and they became upset because of what Jesus was saying. Let me share something with you if you don't mind. Anytime you address a person about some behavior that you know that's not God, they will get upset. They will become contemptuous. They will be mad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, you see, brothers and sisters, the Pharisees were men who lived a lavish lifestyle, obtaining all that money could afford them. They mocked, yes, they did. They mocked the idea of using their money to help others. Their attitude was that their money was theirs. And they were not about to take advantage, take advice, in other words, were not about to take advice from Jesus on how to use their own money. While the Pharisees disregarded what they heard from Jesus, Jesus began to unfold, amen, the terrible end that await those who live only for the pleasure of their own sin and selfish desire. Isn't that like our Satan? No matter how you might be feeling about the truth that Jesus speak, no matter how you might be feeling about Jesus' word, about God's word, about the word that we find and about, no matter how you might be feeling about it, it still is what it is. Jesus will not change the meaning of what he's saying for any of us it's to benefit us, it's to make us grow and develop into a better Christian, it's to make us grow and develop into better men, better people within our neighborhood and in our community. Amen. Luke here, who is the writer of Luke, he was a physician and he knew very well the grief and the sorrow that comes with the end of a person's life. Jesus makes it clear that immediately upon death, the beggar soul was carried by angels to, to his final resting place. As we unfold this text that we have before us this morning, the three most important points we would like to bring to your attention concerning death. Praise his holy name. First, Jesus teaches us that upon death, the soul has to go somewhere. Amen. <clears throat> Note, if you will, both the rich man and the beggar, they both had a soul. But that was their only commonality. Lazarus, the beggar, like so many today, was kicked to the curb by society. Those that we see that, 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 that needs a helping hand, sometimes we turn our back, turn our face away from that person, try to avoid not seeing them, but still the need is still from us who's capable of being able to minister to that need. Yes, Lazarus, amen, was kicked to the certain curve by society. He didn't have a friend in the world to care about him or to care about him or be concerned about him, except the angelic host. His body may not have had pallbearers, but his soul certainly did, hallelujah. And according to religious tradition, the beggar was ushered into Abraham's heavenly home, which Jesus called Abraham's bosom. Now, amen, Jesus points out that the rich men also died and was spirit. In my mind, we can imagine that this rich man, money probably afforded him a spectacular funeral with costly tomb. But it wouldn't have mattered much, church, because the rich man's soul was carried off into him. These, amen, are some powerful, strong words coming from Jesus. It is a reality we all must face concerning death. The reality is we all must spend eternity somewhere, hallelujah. And it all begins the moment you close your eyes. 
The question we all should be asking ourselves, the question that needs to be answered this morning is, have you prepared a proper home for your soul? Have you taken time out of your busy living to think about the life after life? God allow you with each new day to get ready for your home going. This parable teaches us that death is not concerned about your status in life. For Lazarus was poor and the rich man had plenty. It's not what you have that determines where you end up, but it's who you have. That's why the songwriter said, as long as I got King Jesus, can I get a witness? Notice if you will, amen, notice if, 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 you, if you have King Jesus, you have a place of safety. The, the Bible tells us that after Lazarus was carried away by the angels into Abraham's bosom, in other words, a place of comfort, he was in a place of safety. Death is surely unknown as an unknown event to all of us. But there is one who has overcome death, buried on the grave. Hallelujah. His name, his name is Jesus. And today he offers you the safety and the comfort that will carry you through life. And the one, this, this life that we're in, and the one that's yet to come. Amen. We shouldn't have to be afraid of death. We who are believers. Because Paul has told us to be absent from the body. Is to be present with the Lord. And we know that one day that this life journey will come to an end. But there is a better place awaiting you and I. Can I get a witness church? Secondly, Jesus teaches that when a believer dies, his soul immediately enters into God's presence. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Look at this. The beggar, who is a man of faith, dies and is immediately transported to heaven. At that moment, this believer, enjoy, this believer enjoys the full and the complete presence of God for the first time. Paul, he explains it in 2 Corinthians 5, 6 and 8, he says, Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that with we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, hallelujah, and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing to rather be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. In other words, Paul teaches us that when a believer dies, our absence down here represent our presence up there. Can I get a witness? I am so glad about that this morning. Jesus said this happened suddenly. It happened at a twinkling of an eye. Amen. The angelic hope carry us home. Our soul is part, it's the part that is holy. Our soul is the part that is complete and it belongs to the Lord. Our soul is returned back to the home in the bosom of Abraham. Our soul has made it back to the maker. Our soul is there now with God. Amen. Once we pass on, our soul is bright there in the presence of God Almighty. He is, he is our creator and our maker. He is the one that made us and knows everything about us. So as we go, as David said, through the valley of the shadow of death, we know that he's right there with us every step of the way. And when death does show up in our life, when we close our eyes for the last time, we got a better place that's already being prepared by us, by our Lord and our Savior, who is the Christ this morning. This rich man also experienced an instant yet different transformation at the moment of his death. We don't know whether this rich man came by his wealth honestly or dishonestly. We all, all we know is that his sin was one of selfishness. He had a great deal of wealth and he used it, amen, to provide for himself himself only. Jesus teaches that he preserved, amen, Jesus teaches that he preserved, amen, the wrath and received the wrath and the curse of God. It is not that this rich man did not see the need that was surrounding him, the, 
the, the need that was around him. For the scriptures let us know that he saw it. For the scriptures say Lazarus, which was laid at his gate. He was laid at his, da his gate daily. He was laid there daily. Amen. Lazarus at, was at the rich man's gate. He saw the rich man. He saw the need, but yet he ignored the need. He saw the suffering, but he overlooked the suffering. He saw the hurt, yet he disregarded the hurt. He saw Lazarus there. He knew there was a need there. He saw, but yet still he pretended or acted like or even disregarded seeing the need. And he had the ability to be able to fulfill the need. Pray God that we who call ourselves believers, we who are the children of the most high God, that when we see a need, that we don't reach forth or reach out in abundance that God has given us to help that need. Sometimes we use the excuse saying how they might use it. But if you're giving it from the heart, don't you worry about how they use it. That's what God and God looks at the heart. He will take care of the rest. Just do what God has required you to do. When we look at the difference between Lazarus and the rich man, the rich man life, we will find this, brothers and sisters. The rich man was clothed in purple and fine linen. Lazarus was in, red, was in rags. The rich man lived in, elegant, in an elegant mansion. Lazarus was laid in the gate of the mansion. The rich man had, a, had health, well-nourished body. Lazarus was full of sores. The rich man fared consumptuously every day. Lazarus lived on the crumb from the rich man's table. The rich man had a physician to care for him. Lazarus had a dog to lick his feet. But there's a difference, amen. But here's the difference that really, really matters. Here's the difference, amen. The rich man trusted in his own wealth. But guess what? Lazarus, hallelujah, trusted in God. Amen. He trusted in God. That's where the rubber meets the road. Amen. Where the truth is separated from lies. Amen. The truth that we trust in God. That we know that even though times may get hard. Even though the times may be troubles in our life sometimes. Even though we seem like we can't make it, we still trust in God. Even though sickness come my way, we still trust in God. Even though burdens show up in our life, we still trust in God. Even though we have distractions that come and want to keep our eyes away from God, we still trust in God. Can I get a witness? Amen. Church, the believer, our soul, eternal future, rest in a relationship with God. Amen. And we have the confidence. Yes, you and I do. We have the confidence that God is preparing a place for those who love them. It's an everlasting dwelling. Not like our eternal home. It's a building that's made by hand. That's why we trust in God. Because our God can do everything. And anything but fail. That our hope is in Him and one home. It's a trust that is tied up in faith. It's a trust that's tied up in confidence. It's a trust that's tied up in re the reassurance that God has proven himself time and time again. Made ways where there was no ways. Oh, we got a God can do anything but fail, I tell you, church. Praise his holy name. You and I, we have been promised a mansion who build and make us, it's gone. We've been promised a dwelling place. He's prepared for us, for our time and weary soul. While our bodies are decaying unto death, the soul is rejoicing, shedding off the heavy weight of this old world, the trials of this old world, the suffering of this old world. While on earth, believers struggle with the burden of a sinful body, but at the moment of death, in the twinkling of an eye, our soul is transformed, and the cares of this world, the suffering of everyday living, will cease to rage within us. We are set free to be with God and to be just like God. 
We sing about it all the time. I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over. We sing about our white robe, our garment of praise, and our robe of righteousness and glory. It's a shouting time because we no longer leave faith to guide us. We now walk by sight. Why can we not, how, why can we not walk by sight, you may be asking? Because we're in the presence of the one who has proven us worthy to be called his disciple. The one who has brought us over. The one who has wiped away our tears. The one that has calmed calm our fears and helped carry our cross. We're in the presence of Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. We have no need to walk by faith because we're able to see him. We're able to witness him. We're able to know that that's our Savior. And he is the one that brought us over. He is the one that carried us through. He is the one that opened up the ways. Amen. Open up the ways and the doors in our life so we can walk through. He is the one that made the difference and he's making the difference even right now. Hallelujah. Oh. Oh, what a moment it's going to be when we see Jesus face to face. What a moment. Amen. Apostle Paul. Describe that moment in the Philippians 1 and 21. Paul said, For me to live, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. In 1 Corinthians 15 and 55, 55, Paul said, O death, where is thy stain, O grave, where is thy victory? In Romans 6 and 23, Paul said, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I got a seat in the kingdom. What about you this afternoon? Finally, my brothers and sisters, Jesus teaches us through this parable that hell is a real place. Jesus said that in hell the rich man lifted his eyes, being in torment, and asked Abraham for a favor. He asked, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his fang in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented of this place. This, my brothers and sisters, let you and I know that the soul has a personality. It is still able to have vision, memory, and speech. This conversation between Abraham and the rich man shows the hopeless misery, agony, and suffering, amen, of a condemned soul. When we look at the world we're living in, it looks like evil people seem to receive the good and good receive the evil. But be not deceived, God is not mocked. A day, hallelujah, a day, a day of reckoning is coming. As wicked people have good things in this life, but at death they are separated from all good. So godly people facing evil things in this life, but at death those evil things will forever move away from them. That's why we, hallelujah, the saints of the most high God, can't get discouraged. We can't get depressed. Get downhearted and be deferred and discouraged be disrespected because better days can I help you is coming oh we have better days further down the road each and every day that we have to wake up we know that sometime the sun don't shine sometime when we wake up we seem hard to even get out of bed because we're going through some trials or some tribulation. Sometimes it feels like that our old body seems like it's falling apart, but yet still we press on. Why do we press on? Because we realize there's a high mark of calling. We realize that Jesus suffered 
bled and died on yonder scary cross that I was suffering we're going through is just for a little while. So we continue to hold on. We continue to endure. We continue to take one step at a time. Realizing that one day when life's journey is over, we're going to have a seat in the kingdom. We just got to continue to hold on to God's changing hand. I'm here to tell you that he will carry you through every now and then. I know you feel like you just can't make it, but I'm here to tell you, I'm here to encourage you to hold on, continue to trust God, continue to live each day for the Lord. Even though it may be hard, guess what? He will. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? He will. He will take care of you. Every now and then, you got to reach back on what he already done. Didn't he wake you up early this morning? Started you on your way. You got to reach back on what he's already done. Didn't he put food on your table? Didn't he give you a peaceful rest sleep last night? Didn't he put a shelter over your head? Didn't when you went to your closet, you had a full arrangement of clothing to pick from? Didn't he take care of you then? Is he taking care of you now? Guess what? He tomorrow is even in his hand. And he already has the day prepared for you. But one day, all oh, this will come to an end. We will close our eyes. And then when we open them up, we'll be there in the presence of God. Oh, no more sadness. No more trials. No more tribulation. No more worry. No more sickness. No more heartache. No more burden. But over yonder, keep telling you over yonder, there's nothing but joy. Hell, oh, joy. Joy to be in the presence of the Most High God. Joy to be right there with our Lord and our Savior. Joy to be with all the saints of God who made it over. And I'm so glad that even when trouble shows up, I know things will get better. I know it will be better because I have a God that sits high and he looks low, I tell you, church. And he makes all the difference in my life. Hallelujah. The conversation that Abraham was having with the rich man. He said, I, there's a gulf between us that's hindering me from being able to come over there and you to come over here. There's a great separation. But one day, church, there's going to be another separation. The songwriter said, there's going to be a separation from the right, from the wrong. And my question to you this morning, which side will you be on? Won't be a man that be separated with, it would be the God man, Jesus himself. And what side will you be on? Will you be on the side of the Lord? Or will be you on the side that will send you to damnation? Today is a good day, an excellent day to meet the Lord. As I stand before you, I give you an invitation of discipleship. Giving you the pleasure of being able to meet a Savior that can change your life. So you too can say, I've got a seat in the kingdom. But the choice is yours. You get the opportunity to make the choice. You can receive it as your Lord. Or you can reject it. For he's already done that you and I are incapable of doing. And that is saving ourselves. He always has been there. Whatever time you're going through, he's right there right now. He's always been there waiting for you to open up your heart and let him in. Won't you receive Jesus today? Won't you receive him and lay him allow him to be the Lord of your life? And oh, what a difference he will make. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, 
who art in heaven. We thank you, dear God. Thank you, Lord, that the words from Jesus concerning the rich man and Lazarus still has the power, even today, to convict and correct and to draw. I pray, God, that there may be one out there, Lord, that needs to allow you to come in so you can be able to minister to their hearts and their lives so they too can be part of the family of God. I pray that this prayer, Lord, reaches them. And Lord, I pray that they're praying along with me, God, that they, that they use this opportunity, this precious opportunity, to allow you to come into their life. And I also pray for the saints of God. As we go through these trying times, that they continue to hold on. Be strong in the things of God. Hold on because change is coming. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We pray that your holy will forever be done. Not in some things, but in all things. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God for you. We pray God your strength. We pray God to continue to help keep you watch over you. Until our next period, being able to come with you once again, we pray that God will forever be done in your realm. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest with and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. As long as I have his love